Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. And we are talking this week about how to overcome your fear of picking up the phone and actually having conversations with people. Thank you for all the great feedback we got on the first five points from yesterday. If you did not listen to those points and, well, frankly, maybe even view the video on YouTube, it is not too late. So make sure you listen to part one, and today is part two. So, Julie, let's pick up right where we left off at point number six. Point number six, have a mindset of being of service. When you make it all about the person you're talking to, you'll make it less about you. Maya Angelou famously stated, they'll forget what you said. That means don't be too wound up about every single point of the script, but they will remember how you made them feel. So remove the words I, me, my, and mine as much as possible from your conversations. Ask more questions and make fewer statements. So let's drill down and make that super practical. Um, and I've given this example before, but it, re- it radiates, the radiate, whoa, that's, it's mm. nuclear, right? It resonates with a lot of you. Um, and here's the actual thing that happened on an actual coaching call. And the actual coaching client's name was Jeff, which you basically, you uh, stumbled across him recently, didn't you? Yes. yes. He's still doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. of course he is. Mm-hmm. And his whole business is based on proactive lead generation. Indeed. And now he's got a bunch of people that are working with him and it's part of his team to proactively lead generate. Using similar scripts that you're about to reveal, I'm sure. That Julie and I taught him how to do. All right. So here's basically the premise. He was great at, um, you know, he had the scripts memorized. He had the scripts scripts internalized. He was personalizing them here and there. He was doing really great. And when you'd role play, or rather when I'd role play with him, he was as good as you needed to be, if not even a little bit better than most, even the greatest prospectors were. Just fantastic. Great. Everything about what he was doing. What his voice sounded like, um, you know, the tenor in his voice, every little tiny nuanced thing, he had nailed it. But he would not set an appointment to save his life. And so we had a number of coaching calls in a row where we were trying to sort of debug why he wasn't being very successful having, um, you know, proactively lead generating. And so finally what I did, uh, I mean, I'd asked him to send recordings, right? So he'd send recordings, but the recordings were were not very useful because they were the best of what he was able to do. So he would send me, maybe he'd make 10 contacts and he'd send me the one that was really a home run appointment or not. And, you know, I mean, that's what coaching clients do a lot. They'll kind of move things around and hide from you. And they're not going to want you to actually discover what's holding them back. So on a coaching call one day, I actually made him prospect um, live while we were on the phone, while I listened to it. <laughs> not a role play. You mean with a real person. Right. And so he st- he fired up his Red X account. And if you guys aren't using Red X, you absolutely positively should. It is the single greatest go-to source for expired listing data. And they will find phone numbers for you, addresses, property history, the whole nine yards. Then all you have to do is do what Jeff was doing and drill down and get on the phone. And if you are not yet a Red X subscriber, do uh, consider becoming a Red X subscriber and getting a $150 discount when you text the word RED, R-E-D, to 47372. Text the word RED, R-E-D, to 47372. And when you do, you will then be able to join really the thousands of agents who are using Red X every day as their go-to expired um, appointment setting assistant. So back to Jeff. So he was now actually doing real, honest to God, lead generation, pro, um, proactive lead generation calls while I was listening. And then I started hearing actually what he sounded like with sellers. And when I heard uh, on these calls was nothing like he was when he was role playing with me and certainly no- nothing like he was when he was sending me the uh, best of recordings from his previous week's calls. His voice changed. He was up, he was uh, lifting his voice at the end. So he, when he was even making a <laughs> You state, can't even do it. I can't even do it. <laughs> yeah. He, he was saying things that were just not even on the script. He was um, just an absolute train wreck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, I listened to two or three of these, and it was very painful because it was such – it was nothing like what he was actually capable of doing, and I knew it. So then I asked him, and I broke it down. So we he ended his you know uh, coach torture of me listening mm-hmm. to him make horrible prospecting calls, and then we got back on the coaching call. And I said, all right, I want you to tell me and write down on a piece of paper exactly what you're thinking – 
thinking before you pick up the phone call. And he said a bunch of, well, I feel confident. I know I'm going to say, and I'm like, bullshit. I just heard you make three really atrocious co- uh, prospecting calls. You're definitely not feeling confident. So then I had him write down what the real words were. And I had to drill down. I had to push him to the point where he was willing to admit how uncomfortable he was. And then he started saying things that were miraculous. And I'm saving you guys a lot of you know, real estate coaching, Misery. coaching therapy, right? Mm-hmm. So he started writing down, what will they think of me? He started writing down, what if I say something and it offends them? What if they yell at me? What if they hurt my feelings? He started writing down, and it was a long, long, long list. And the common word in all of the th- statements he was thinking that were essentially holding back from becoming effective at prospecting, the common elements were I, me. In other words, he was thinking about himself. When he was in that place where he was picking up the phone, calling people, Red X was doing the dialing for him. You know, Red X was essentially, like I said, found all the information for him. He was poised and perfectly situated to set appointments. His brain was full of ego-based thoughts about himself. And it was all, in essence, about how he'll feel if this happens. It wasn't based in fact. It was, And he was disconnected. He didn't realize that those are the thoughts that were dominating. There weren't even thoughts. They were more rooted in emotions. So those are the emotions that were washing him when he was actually making those calls. Hopefully some of you guys will get something from what I'm saying. I, all of you will eventually if you're not yet because everyone has to cross this bridge. So then what I pointed out to him was is that he is focusing on himself. his allowing his ego, which is what it really truly is, to put him in a fight or flight mode when he's making the calls. So when he was making the calls and he was having a contact with an actual seller, without him knowing, his circadian brain, his lizard brain was kicking in and causing him to go into fight or flight. His brain was then releasing endorphins as if it was fight or flight, as if there was an actual threat. And man, was he ever going for flight. (laughs) Big time. And you could hear it in his voice. You could hear he wanted nothing to do with that phone call and the seller heard it when he was obviously uh, talking with him. So then I started helping him hopefully realize that it wasn't about him. In other words, the call, the actual action of, um, you know, proactively lead generating or prospecting someone, he was making it about himself and it wasn't about him. It was about the person that he was supposed to be helping, which in this case was the perspective, you know, for him, seller, his next listing. And his dominant thoughts had to shift away from the fight or flight it had to shift away from the ego-based, you know, all these words and phrases that he wrote down and have had to move towards the simple idea that I'm here to be of service. I'm here to help you. And we had to, and it didn't take long. I mean, he was ready for this lesson. It didn't take long, a week or two. And then something absolutely flipped in his brain. Uh, we had him write down on a big piece of paper right in front of his computer, right where he was standing, right when he could not hide from it. I am here to be of service to you. And he would tell that to himself. I am here to be of service to you. How can I help you? I'm here to be of service to you. How can I help you? That is what he started to, you know, bend his own mindset around is the, you know, really the, the truth, the truisms that we're all here to be of service to each other. We're all here to be of service to fellow man. That is our highest and truest purpose on this planet is to be of service to other people. And when he was in alignment with what his highest and truest purpose was, when he was also then able to um, lean into the skill set that he had and the essentially all the practice he'd put in, he became one of my best appointment setting prospectors ever. So he moved yes. away from his ego dominated mind more and then moved towards the realization that we're all here to be of service to others, which is the exact opposite of what many of you have been led to believe with all of your branding and social media and, and all the rest of it. All that's circling around the exact opposite of being of service to other people. It's focused on narcissism. It's focused about around ego, which is one of the biggest reasons why that stuff doesn't ultimately work because it's out of alignment with what, with what, frankly, the most successful people in the history of humanity have always known that they are only successful in their being of service to other people and more pictures of you eating your lunch um, you know, while sitting on a yacht is not being of service to anybody. Absolutely. Well put. Well put. Okay, so that is absolutely true. And what a great affirmation to start before you make your calls that I am here to be of service to you. How can I be of service to you? That is a really great mindset resetting before you pick up the phone and in between calls as well. So point number seven, whom you are calling matters. Circle prospecting. That uh, term is tossed around a lot. Circle prospecting, that is basically calling around listings and sales with something like a just listed or just sold script. It is not effective. Recognize that different types of calls or different types of prospects 
yield different results, very different results. Contacting expired listings and unrepresented sellers, those are for sale by owners, naturally yield more appointments than cold calling random homeowners. I would put probate in there. I put new construction builders in there. Even on the side of where you should of be where focusing. where you should be right? focusing. We actually go as far as to suggest that, and I know this is going to be something that's going to raise the cackles of some of you. Like a lot of you guys think, well, I have to get my feet wet by calling, uh, doing circle prospecting and calling right. around lists and sold. Basically just calling people who have no interest in buying or selling real estate, hoping that you find the needle in the haystack. That is a really piss poor use of your time. And furthermore, yep. that's going to cause you to uh, basically say prospecting didn't work. I never actually set an appointment. What you're really doing is you're avoiding the higher skilled activities, which yield the better results. And there's something that all of you hopefully should be realizing. If you're doing what other people aren't willing to do, you're going to have experiences and frankly help people and make money that those other folks never would because you were willing to, again, do what you didn't want to do when you didn't want to do it at the highest level. You actually became somebody who earned the right to be incredible be successful. So don't be confused. Always call, and it should be obvious to all of you, you know, there's groups of people out there that have their hands in the air right now and say, yes, I want to sell my house because this is all, this series is all about prospecting, right? And so we're focusing on listings. Yes, I want to sell my house. Why not use all your best energies calling those people? Why not call the people who already have their hands in the air and say, yes, I want to sell my home? Don't waste all your time trying to optimize Facebook ads when if your goal is to take a listing, why don't you just call the people who right now say, yes, I have my house. I would like to sell my house. Why not? You're telling me it's going to take less work uh, to master how to you know, optimize a Facebook ad than it is to learn how to actually prospect, proactively lead generate to an expired listing, for example. I have news for you. It absolutely is way more work trying to learn the digital marketing. And here's really the underlying reason why. When you learn how to prospect, any kind of proactive lead generation, that skill set is scalable in the sense that it the it won't change. It's portable too. You could do it at any market, any price range across town, in your town. You're, maybe your spouse gets relocated. You can use it in your new town. It's awesome. All it takes is one of these platforms to decide to jigger around with the algorithm or the rules and all of a sudden all the effort you put into trying to optimize some specific landing page and some funnel, it doesn't work anymore. Now you're playing whack-a-mole to try to figure out why it doesn't work. But if you know how to proactively lead generate that works all the damn time yes, provided does. you put in the effort and you make you know you work but some of you actually have been led to believe that you're supposed to be spending all your time behind a keyboard as keyboard jockeys and trying to figure out all these little hacks to making digital marketing work if your goal is to list properties which it should be if your goal is to make money which it should be if your goal is to be of service to other people which it should be you have something that other industries don't have you actually can easily access, access read a list of uh, sellers that actually want to sell. If you're selling Ginsu knives, you have to go find somebody that wants to buy a Ginsu knife. Which is not obvious. Thus the internet marketing. Thus the marketing and the advertising. But you're in real estate. You can get for free lists of people that absolutely positively want to sell their home. You don't have to buy leads and additionally, additionally, you don't have to go and try to figure out how to generate leads. We just told you, use Red X and you can go and have a list of expired sent to you every day. There's no expired to my marketplace. That is absolutely not true, especially if you're in the western part of the United States, which a lot of you are, frankly. There are so many expired listings in California, it's insane. And yet, how many of you right now are thinking you need to create some complicated web of social media with videos and landing pages like. so that someday, one day, hopefully, someone's going to want to send a lead your, pay, your way? Go to the M or rather have Red X, go to the MLS for you, pull out all the expires, use our scripts, start setting appointments, make money. Any in going back to California, what's your average sale price going to be? At least 800, maybe even $900,000? I mean, come on, guys. This should be obvious to all of you. So yes, text the word RED to 47372. We don't own Red X. We have a, you know, a, I would call it a long-term business relationship with Red X. But this is a product that if Julie and I were to ever get back into selling real estate and we wanted to go after expireds, which frankly would be the first thing we would yep. do, we would absolutely use Red X. We used uh, Red X back when we sold real estate in the 90s. This is the service all of you guys should be considering using. So text the word RED to 47372. Julie, point number eight. eight. Point number eight. I love this point, And I have all of our coaching clients doing this. Prospect for listings for your buyers. Your buyers expect you to find them their dream home. And not by using the same tools that they have, like Realtor.com or, you know, Zillow or anything that are free online. They expect you to be doing something else than that. 
Prospecting specific neighborhoods for specific buyers is highly effective in a market with very low inventory. This is a great way to create new business by turning a seller into a buyer, then lather, rinse, and repeat. Many, many deals are happening every day that never flow through the MLS. I want you to tell two stories, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the one story I'm remembering first is not the most recent experience where you had somebody that stacked a whole bunch of deals this way. Yeah. But there was one that you had of an agent in Austin who was uh, petrified of calling her centers of influence and past clients. I'll set it up so you remember which one I'm talking mm -hmm. Or Do you already remember? I and think she, it's Christy it, who was, was going to be one of my next calls. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe. No, this, Lakeway, Austin. Well, I think this one is an older Maybe. client. This okay. was a, yeah, I mean, she was a, somebody you had years ago. Oh, but set the, it up then. The gist of it was is that she was calling to this neighborhood, called um, one of her past clients. Maybe I'm remembering it wasn't wrong and it's it okay. wasn't a past client. And she, uh, basically, she had a. Uh, oh, oh yes. I know. Anna in Austin. Anna, yes. Anna in Austin. Okay, right. yes. Now, Anna traditionally had not been somebody who liked to be on the phone doing this type of work. And My, this, was, this was like one of your typical clients. This was yes. an agent who had an average sale price well over a million dollars. I think her average was almost $3 million. Okay. Yes. And nice, nice areas of Austin. And right? great lady. Great lady. Very professional. Family in real estate forever. Very skilled. Okay. And she did not like being on the phone doing this type of thing. And you said, and I'm now remembering, just I don't want you to skip any of these details. This is important for our listeners, sure. right? There was an insurgent. Yes. Okay. There you go. <laughs> an insurgent in her market. So we had, you know, we had talked about talking to past clients and things, and she, you know, she's making good living and was sort of dabbling with the thought, but it wasn't until there was an insurgent, an agent that relocated to Austin from California, got licensed in Texas, and guess what went expired hunting, which is a smart thing to do when you move to a new town, right? Well, it just so happens that this agent from California prospected one of Anna's past clients that in a different type of market had expired, they were trying to get, I think it was 11 million at the time. It expired at 11 million. Uh, Anna and the seller agreed that they would take a break for a while, maybe revisit in future times when it would maybe be easier to get 11 million. Well, agent from California prospects $11 million expired of Anna's. And meanwhile, the market had changed and ends up selling it for, I think they got like 19 million because it had been like two or three years. Austin had heated up. To her buyer. <clears throat> to her buyer, right? right? So she who, was- Who also was relocating from California. Right, so you were, you, basically this was a, a new agent in a marketplace who was essentially prospecting, proactively lead generating to expired listings. High end expired. And, and was able to double in a $19 million house. Yes, because, okay. Now she, that seller, when I'm sure, um, you know, you don't have this end of the story because you didn't know that agent. But the essence of it was, is that agent probably door knocked that seller. Yes. Uh, is that what happened? Do you remember? I can't remember if it was a call or a door knock, but she had uh, targeted that specific high end neighborhood because that relocating person had wanted to, I believe she went door to door in that, which by the way, you know, you can actually do that in high end neighborhoods, right? And ended up creating the sale, not just, you know, reactivated that expired, but also sold it to her own buyer. Well, Anna, because she watches the hot sheet every day, noticed this and was outraged by this possibility that not only had that listing gone to that agent, but that it went for more. This was the catalyst that caused Anna to then start being more motivated to talk to her past clients about what their home might be worth in today's market, you know, proactive lead generation on the phone, it, which she had also been... Uh, she also had another objection that all of you guys live with that we did a podcast series on, which is... I would list my home with you today, but where am I going to move? Now, we, we did that last week. Yes. Now, Anna had that, she, you know, was motivated by this painful experience. Well, because most, 99% of everyone, Julie and I included, are not motivated by moving towards something. People are motivated by uh, losing, losing something, something they already have. And in Anna's case, it was more of her past clients losing to other agents, but also it was her view of herself in the marketplace, because here's some new agent effectively that starts to take very, very high-end listings away from her. Yes. Yeah, so uh, inspired by this, Anna starts calling her um, past clients, even still with the fear that, well, I'd list with you, but where am I going to go? Okay. So she calls one of them and I, I it's multi-million dollar. I can't, we'll call it about a $15 million listing. And Anna was calling with a simple script, you know, are you curious about what your home is worth in today's market? Things have changed, blah, blah, blah. Would you like an updated Comparative, comparative market analysis, 15 million. Okay, so the past client says 15 million. Wow, you could get me 15 million? <laughs> she said, well, yes, based on the comparables, yes. And Anna even, I, she even put out that objection. Well, are you worried about where you might move to? 
And you know what the seller, I always think of them as sellers, the prospect said, you get me $15 million for my house, I will figure out where to move to. Amen. Okay? So that's a, that is a long story with many different elements to it, all of it hinging back to being proactive on the phone and reaching out to, in this case, past clients. But it started with the painful lessons started from the expired experience. So you had another experience. We're trying to give you guys real-life examples so that all of you can realize we're not asking you to do things that, frankly, require... Yes, use our scripts. Yes, use our objection handlers when there are any. Yes, use our techniques. Yes, there's little tiny nuanced approaches that make this really work opposed to just mildly work. Uh, and absolutely positively, the thing hopefully all you're taking away from this, you know, back and forth that Julie and I are having is that you can do it. You can do it, especially now because of this market. Now, you had another great example, probably Christy, <laughs> where it was someone that was, again, same thing, prospecting for buyers in a market where this particular buyer wanted to move. Mm -hmm. You told this story, I think, on the pod two weeks ago, but it's worth re retelling because it'll inspire yes. people. It's keeping things in Texas for now. Yeah. Um, I believe this was a Christy deal. Um, she had... It might have been my Atlanta girls. They have similar average sale prices. So actually, I remember who it was. It was Kristen in Dallas. Kristen in Dallas. Okay, so that's who it was. But they, you know, had a buyer with very specific needs. Now, for some of you, that is the end of the story because you don't know exactly what you're looking for. You're just plugged into the MLS, hoping that it will give you something to sell. So the first lesson in this is know your buyers really well. What is what would be their dream home today? You find them something with a great lot with a pool in a certain school district that's less than five years old. Okay. You can go find that. So she went door knocking. She went to go find that. She's rescheduled. So um, she went to go find that door knocking. And the seller says, well, again, same as last time. Yes, if you can get me, I think this was 900000 uh, for my house. Yes, absolutely bring your buyer by. Well, as it turns out, that buyer, act, this is the deal where the seller of the 900 might actually trade houses with the buyer. Okay, now Julia's going to tell you guys what happened, and there's going to be a quiz afterwards, so make sure you're paying attention. Uh, Go. Yeah, yeah, well, so that, <laughs> and, and we're still hanging on the cliff whether that's actually going to be a trade. But meanwhile, she also generated two other listing opportunities just because she was door knocking in that neighborhood for her buyer, which is what our point is here. Use your buyers that you guys are all frustrated complaining all the time. There's not enough inventory. I have all of these buyers. Many of them are actually highly motivated, pre-approved, loan committed, or all cash. And the only reason they're not in contract is because you have not found something for them to buy. I don't know what to say. Join Premier Coaching. I don't know when to do this. Join Premier Coaching. I don't know what time of day to do this. How about this, guys? That should be obvious when they're home. <laughs> I, you know, right? I don't know what to say of objection handlers. I don't know. I get it. There's a million excuses. But, you know, what's your alternative at this point? Oh, I know one. It's too cold. That might be true in some parts of the world, but for the most part, not it's, not, it's not too cold. <laughs> You're out of excuses. Go start doing the real work of real estate, guys. And you'll start getting the real results. It's one of these, it, what we're doing on this show and this podcast series should be absolutely painfully obvious to all of you is something that all of you should be doing. You will think of excuses. If you have a big team, you're going to say, well, I'm just too busy, busy, busy. Well, then get your staff members, get everyone to go and just start making proactive lead generation calls. I have a big database and we're dripping on the folks. Why don't you stop the dripping? Because that frankly sounds disgusting. Gross. And why don't you instead start calling them? And why don't you call these uh, you know, folks and actually set appointments and pre-qualify them? Don't have this false sense of security because you have a big database. That's like pretty much mistake number one for anybody in any industry to believe there's actually uh, real value in your database. There's re -val real value in pre-qualified leads. A lead itself has no value. Uh, if you want a bunch of leads, guys, you can buy a bunch of you know names and numbers from any list company online. What you want are pre-qualified leads. That means it's going to take you know you picking Skill. up the phone and having calls. In making having conversations and really a little bit round the bend on uh, this last point. Mm -hmm. It is so critical that you realize in a market that's in transition like this, the thing that's going to give you the unfair advantage, the thing that's going to make it so you do have an incredible long-term reputation, which you guys like to call brand, the thing that's going to uh, put you in a position to help, you know, maybe it's a couple people, then it's dozens of people, then it's hundreds of people, then it's thousands of people. It's having your mind, your frequency tuned into this type of thinking. And what you're going to see, the overarching theme, if you want to like really try to understand where we're coming from on all this, is opportunity is all around you at all times. There are, there are never a shortage of people that are interested in real estate. You are blessed 
to have, have chosen a career, you know, maybe it's a part-time career and you're going to become full-time. Maybe you just got your license. Maybe you've been in the business forever. Maybe you're feeling a little burned out. What I'm suggesting all of you do is realize you are in the right industry at the right time and you're selling something that is pretty much going to not really depend on the economy or the presidential election or alien visitations or whatever else <laughs> The you know, news is going to try to basically make us worry about. You are selling something that everyone will always need, and that is a home. You are selling something that everyone will always need uh, their entire life cycle. A first home, a second home. Maybe, they just, maybe you're in New York City and you do a lot of leases. People need places to live. You're not selling something that's a voluntary thing. You can have people that might downsize or upsize, but they always are going to be buying or leasing real estate. You guys get it? You're in the right place at the right time. Now, it's really critical that you start taking the right actions. Those of you who are in the wait and see mode or the passive lead generation mode, those are the agents we're seeing struggle the most. Those are the agents that we're seeing fail out of the business the quickest. The waiting around for the market to come your way or for your branding or marketing campaign to work, those days are over and frankly, they never really worked in the first place. The, ba the past market kind of whitewashed the lack of results that a lot of those things, the shiny object things you know, a lot of you were saying, well, the shiny objects and the social media and the TikToking and the Instagramming, that's the reason people were calling me. That's actually very rarely is that true. And we've discussed that many, many times in the podcast as well. So this is your opportunity really to become the best version of yourself as a real estate professional. Join us at Premier Coaching. The links are in our bio. The links are in the description of the, today's podcast or if you're over on YouTube. Or you can simply go to premiercoaching.com, premiercoaching.com. We know you love the podcast because this is the number one listened to daily podcast for real estate agents in at least the United States. You will not believe the experience you have as a Premier Coaching client. So just go to premiercoaching.com. In the meantime, guys, thank you for keeping this number one listened to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And I have to say, I'm really you know, thrilled how fast our YouTube channel has really gone to the next level. We're over 20,000 subscribers. Make sure you subscribe and you hit that little bell icon so you're notified every time we have a new uh, video, which, by the way, is every day. And there's thousands of past podcasts. I think there's thousands of past YouTube videos. Go back and start listening and consuming all of our content. Actually, there are, if you want to listen to over 2,000 past podcasts, that's on uh, iTunes. And I think on YouTube, it's maybe like 500. So if you're really wanting to, you know, Tim and Julie binge, well, there's your path forward. Just, you know, tune into us on iTunes. In the meantime, guys, thank you for keeping this number one list to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.